Hey Microscopist, this is Eric Miller here from Instructinate, and I'm going to give you the best and easiest method for doing the basic alignments in your SEM or FIB before taking an image. You can skip to this timestamp to watch this procedure done in the microscope, but I'm going to start off by describing the procedure with diagrams. To take an image, the main things that we're going to need to fix are the objective aperture and the stigmators. And if you follow my basic instructions here, you're going to be well on your way to being a microscopist extraordinaire. First, here are a couple of things we're going to need to keep in mind before we start. Number one, the first thing we need to remember is that when working inside the electron microscope, microscope, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to find where things are good. And because of that, we aren't ever going to look for where things are good, because we can always find where things are bad. And so that's what we're always interested in finding. So let's say we turn a knob or make an adjustment in one direction, and it's going this way, and suddenly uh, the image or whatever it is that we're doing gets worse. And we say, okay, I know that it's bad right here. So I'm going to turn that same adjustment uh, back in the other direction and it's gonna get better. Um, but we don't care about where it's better. We only care about where it's bad. So we keep going, we keep going, and now it's bad over here. So if we know that it's bad here and we know that it's bad here, where is it going to be good at? Well, right in the middle, of course. So that's what we're always trying to find. Not where it's good, but the two points at where things are bad. So we can find the midpoint in between the two. If you can remember that one thing, all of your alignments and adjustments and everything that you do in the electron microscope is going to be much, much easier. Number two, we can't do this on a flat or featureless area of the sample. We need to find a structure of some kind. Number three, this structure should not be square or have straight edges on it. Straight edges are going to fool you into thinking that things are aligned or in focus inside the microscope when they're not. So what we need, ideally, is something that's round or at least round-ish. Stay away from straight edges. Number four, use the appropriate magnification to do this. Now, the magnification is going to depend on your structure sizes on your sample. We wanna be able to see the small structures on the surface of your sample clearly. And if you're at super low magnification, that's not going to happen. And if you're at really, really high magnification, that's also not going to happen because things are out of alignment and everything's gonna be all squishy. So to give you some general numbers, if you're using a tungsten microscope, you should start off around five to 10,000 X screen magnification. And if you're using a field emitter microscope, maybe about double that. Number five, we're going to repeat alignments multiple times uh, until we do it at a higher magnification than what we're actually going to take a picture at. So why is that? Well, you know, uh, light microscopes, you know, they have those little objectives and they're supposed to be confocal, which means that when you change one objective to the other objective, it's supposed to still be in focus. But you know, they're never really 100% in focus and you always have to kind of tweak it a little bit. Uh, in the electron microscope, that is completely different. Focus and magnification are totally separate, which means we can go to really high magnifications and get much better uh, alignment and focus than we can get at lower magnifications. So for example, let's say we were going to take an image at 50,000 X. So let's say we did all of our alignments and our focusing and stuff at let's say 100,000 X. And then we dropped down to take our picture at 50,000 X. Do you think that would be better than doing all of our alignments and focusing at 50,000 X? The answer would be yes, because we have our 100,000 X focus and alignment. Uh, it's going to be much better than it is at 50,000 X. And uh, we, don't, we can change the, the magnification all we want and it's not going to adjust or interfere with focus or any of our other adjustments. To describe these procedures, we're gonna use this fake image and these fake structures. And we're also going to use this graph here to show us how the adjustments are being made. The x-axis is going to represent making the adjustment in the microscope, that is turning a knob or dragging a slider around or however it is that you make these adjustments in your microscope. The y-axis is gonna represent how good or bad things are. The peak here is going to be perfect and then at the bottom it's gonna be terrible. As I mentioned, at the end of this video, I'll show you what this all looks like inside the microscope. Procedure time. To start off, we'll change the focus back and forth. Changing the focus back and forth like this will tell us what is wrong with our image. If the image moves or translates, that means our aperture is out of alignment, just like it's doing now. If the image stretches like this, that means the stigmators are off. Normally when we're starting off, both of these things will be an issue and we'll start with the aperture. 
To do that, we'll turn on the image wobbler. Depending on the brand of microscope you have, this might be labeled something different, like aperture align or something similar. What this does is it basically changes the focus back and forth for us so our hand doesn't fall off. The next important tool we'll want to deploy is the reduced scan area, which looks something like this when it's turned on. Now, you can do these alignments using the whole screen if you want, but the reduced scan area honestly just makes it a lot easier to work with. This being a demo image, we're fine without it, but in the microscope, the reduced scan size window will be your friend. So what we're looking for is translation of the image on and off the edge of the screen. If things are moving on and off the edge of the screen, that means we need to fix it. Ideally, what we want is no movement or translation of the image. We want it pulsing in place. It may rotate a little bit, that's okay, just so long as it's not translating left, right, up, down. So to fix this, we need to start by choosing the X or the Y control, it doesn't matter which. In this case, we'll just choose X and we'll then make a single decent sized movement of the controls in one direction, and it doesn't matter which direction. We just wanna move the controls enough that we see a change in what's happening on the screen. If the adjustment is too small to see any visible changes in the image, then we are wasting our time. So we make a big change and we wanna pause for a second or two so we can observe the image and ask ourselves the question, is the image moving more? or is it moving less? We should be able to tell this by watching the structures moving on and off the edge of the screen. If the image is moving more, then we are done moving that control in that direction. So we stop and then move the control the same amount in the opposite direction, and we should be back about where we started. We will then continue moving that control in that direction in large, generally equal chunks with time to observe the image movement in between adjustments we should notice the image moving less now. As I mentioned, we don't care about that. We want to keep adjusting in chunks until we see the image start to move more. Once that happens, we know we have passed the optimum point of alignment and need to move it back. Basically, we've found the two points where we know things are bad, and now we can find the midpoint between them, where things will be good. At which time, the image should mostly be moving only along one axis. For example, we just fixed the x-axis, so the image should mostly only be moving along the y-axis now. We'll then go to the other alignment axis and do the same thing. Move a big chunk, sit and watch for a second, then move it again. Find the two points at where things are bad and then determine where the middle is. At the end of the process, it's just important that the image is not translating. This is how the entire process looks from beginning to end inside the microscope. With the image in focus, turn on the image wobbler. Turn on the reduced scan speed. Find the appropriate magnification for your structures. We can see that the movement is bad, so we move one of the controls in one direction until we find the other point at which it becomes bad again. It gets better in this direction, so we'll keep going. Okay, it's bad now. Move it back to the midpoint between the two bad points. The image is mostly moving in one direction now. Move the other control. Okay, it's bad. Move it back. It's getting better, but keep going. Okay, that's bad. Move it back. Increase the magnification and do it again. Once we've stopped the image translation by adjusting the objective aperture, we need to adjust the stigmators. Now the stigmators are the single most important thing you're going to adjust when you're taking a picture in the electron microscope and they're more important than focus, which doesn't make any sense, but is true and I'm gonna prove it to you right now. This is an image that I captured that is perfectly in focus. This is the image I was able to capture after I adjusted the stigmators. The focus is identical between these two images and you can see the dramatic difference. I cannot overstate the importance of proper stigmator adjustment. So how do we know if the stigmators need adjustment? Well, the easy answer is, is that they always need adjustment. Technically, anytime you change focus, you've thrown off your stigmators just a little bit. 
But to prove it, as I mentioned before, changing the focus will tell the tale. If we change the focus and the image stretches, we know that the beam is not round and we need to use the stigmators to push the beam around to make it round. Astigmatism should be fairly easy to spot. On one side of focus, the image will stretch in one direction. On the other side of focus, the image will stretch 90 degrees in the other direction. So how do we make sure our stigs are looking good? We start off by focusing the image. The image is in focus when it is not stretching. This is a perfect case where it's unlikely to be able to find where things are good and we need to instead find where things are bad. So we focus in one direction until we see the image stretching. We stop and then start adjusting in the opposite direction. The image will get less stretchy, but we keep adjusting until we see the image stretching 90 degrees in the other direction. We can then use those two points as a reference to find the center in focus point. Once in focus, i.e. not stretching, we can start adjusting the stigmators. For the aperture alignment, we made a single large adjustment and waited to see how much the image was moving. For the stigmators, we aren't using the image wobbler, so we don't need to wait. We'll continuously adjust one of the stigmator controls in one direction. Again, it doesn't matter if it's an X or Y and it doesn't matter in which direction. However, we do need to ensure that we are moving the control fast enough that we can see the image changing. Again, if we're just moving the control so slowly that we can't see anything changing, we're wasting our time. So we make the adjustment, and once we see the image clearly getting worse, we stop. We go back in the other direction and keep adjusting until we see it getting worse again, which will allow us to find that midpoint where it will be good. Once we're done with that, we do the same thing with the other stigmator. And then we check to see how well we're doing by changing the focus again. If the image still stretches a little bit, then what we might do is go up in magnification a bit and repeat the procedure until all stretching is eliminated. But this is the order we need to go in. Focus, one stigmator, the other stigmator, and then focus again. We always start and end with focus. This is how the whole procedure looks in the SEM. Changing the focus shows stretching. That means the stigmators are off. No stretching equals focus. We adjust one stigmator in one direction. Find the midpoint in between the two bad points. Adjust the other stigmator in the same way. Go up in mag. Change focus. Look for more stretching. Adjust the X again. Adjust the Y again. Change the focus, look for more stretching. If you don't find any, reduce the mag and take an image. The stigmators, more than anything else, are going to make sure that your micrographs come out nice and crispy. So in the future, don't ask if the image is in focus enough, ask if the stigmators were adjusted well enough. And now what you've been waiting for, the quick version. Find a structure. Go up and mag. Turn on the reduced scan speed. Change focus to see what's wrong with the image. Turn on the image wobbler. Adjust the X or Y control of the aperture align in one direction. Find the midpoint between the two bad points where the image is moving the most. Adjust the other aperture align control the same way. The image should not be moving on or off the edge of the screen anymore. Turn off the image wobbler. Focus the image so it's not stretching. Adjust one stigmator. Adjust the other stigmator. Focus again. If there's still some stretching, go up in magnification and do it again. Drop down in mag and take a picture. You're done. This has been Eric Miller for Instructinate, and I hope you check out my Instagram and darkroom pages and contact me through my website if you're interested in having me come to your site and show you how to get the most out of your electron microscope. Thanks, we'll see you next time.